welcome back to the pet buzz you know beth you're one of our favorite guests we love having you we say it all the time but you know we really mean it. it is always great to have you here offering your insights to not only dr fleck and myself but to our listening audience it's great to be here i i love being one of your special people the bidens uh got a cat so you know, we knew they were planning on getting a cat for a while, but if a pet owner is planning on bringing a cat into a dog home, how can a pet owner best prepare? And I'm talking in advance to bringing the cat into the house. Two things. The first are things to set up the house. Um, the, the thing that makes cats feel most comfortable in canine households is lots of really high spaces that are out of reach of the dog. So that if they feel a little scared or threatened, they can jump up really high and get, get away from the dog. Um, it's also, I think, good to put the litter box in a dog-free room. And it's really easy to make a dog-free room. You can um, put a baby gate uh, across the doorway that the cat can jump over, but the dog can't. You can um, put a cat flap in a door. You can uh, just use a, a doorstop, like a baby doorstop to just have the door open like six inches enough for the cat to get through, but not the dog. So the dog doesn't go foraging in the litter box. The cat can poop in peace. Pooping in peace is important to all creatures. So I think high spaces, cat free room. Let's talk about introducing the cat and the dog, especially if the dog is still a puppy or even a younger dog. I think it's important for the dog to be on leash, in the first introductions, um, and for them to be in a place where the cat can exit easily. So you don't stand in the doorway with the dog because the cat has to be able to feel like I can get out of here. If I just don't feel good, I can get out of here. So there has to be a high space in the room and an exit. Dog is on leash. If you have a, a really adult, you know, sort of well-trained impulse control dog, you can teach a leave it cue, which I think you should teach a puppy as well. But puppies, you know, they're not reliable. They're like little kids. They get excited. They can't really be, uh, you know, relied on to follow their training. So I think they need to teach a leave it cue to the puppy too. But for now, when they meet, on leash. And I think, you know, brief, very brief um, introductions during which they're allowed to get as close as they feel comfortable closing. They're allowed to retreat if they if that's what makes them feel better. And they're both given um, treats, rewards for interacting calmly so that they can start to have this sense of, wow, ever every time I see him, I get a treat. He must be pretty good. Now, what about that all that method of putting a, a puppy gate up and having both a dog and cat on one side? Well, that's called habituation and it means you just get used to it. Mm -hmm. And the problem with habituation is that you don't have a chance to reinforce the behaviors you want to see. Okay. So there can be fighting at the gate. And yes, the gate protects them from hurting each other. But, you know, that fighting could then, you know, just sort of that becomes the habitual or fighting. What, what you do, you know, in a more controlled environment is you let them be together and be curious and reinforce curious, calm behavior. Mm -hmm. And when that behavior gets a little bit, you know, reactive, you quickly separate them. And that way you have a chance to reinforce the behaviors you want to see and not give them the chance to practice the behaviors you don't want to see. And really most people buy smaller gates because they think about the price and a dog can very easily, especially a German shepherd can very easily climb over a gate and get into yes. that cat space. Depending on the size of the dog, you can put the gate six to eight inches up off the floor. Sure. Um, which will make it taller. The cat can shimmy under and you just need to make sure it's not so high up that the dog can shimmy under. There's a lot of people in that White House. They're all running around, you know, sure there are not as many cat or even dog lovers there. So so what do we what do we tell that that staff? Well, I mean, I think the first thing always is that both the cat and the dog need ways to get away from people if they want to, but they also need ways to interact with people if they want to. You know, you don't want to end up in a situation where I always have the cat locked up in that room and, you know, for 10 hours, 15 hours a day that I'm working, whatever, the cat doesn't see anyone, the dog doesn't see anyone. So you want to have ways for them to choose to interact with people if they would like and for people to interact with them in positive ways. And so one nice thing you can do is just have a little cookie jar in your office so that when people come in, if the dog and cat choose to come in, strangers can give them a cookie, you know, hey, nice to see you. And then they go, wow, I like strangers. They always give me a cookie. Sure. 
Um, you also need to make sure people aren't lingering at the front door so that your dog or cat doesn't dart out the front door. So it's like when you come in, come in quickly and then take off your coat and then take off your hat, you know, and let's not, let's not greet each other with the door open um, because you want the door to be open and closed very quickly. You don't want uh, cats to run out. Willow, I know, is a barn cat. And I think um, that's going to be an adjustment for her to not be able to dash out the door. And so, especially for a situation like that, you know, because it is going to be an adjustment. The White House is big, but I think they're going to have to be pretty uh, careful about um, the White House has a vestibule. I visited twice about people coming in the first door of the vestibule and then the second door. Can you imagine the great photos of Dr. Jill with Willow on a leash and collar out in the White House grounds? How would that look? I think that's a great idea to to train Willow. So cats typically put them in a little walking jacket because a collar, it's really easy for them to back out of. Um, so walking jackets, they're more secure. And also they're typically made of fabric. And so you have a lot of fashion choices uh -huh. with cats, which can be really lovely. And well, Dr. Think, Jill likes her fashion. She does. And Willow is kind of a, a gray smoke tabby. And I think there's a lot of beautiful colors that go with that, including yellow, like you're wearing now and also red. Yeah six times as many people are allergic to cats than dogs. So what should the Bidens or any family that add a cat addition tell their friends or guests or even staff that come to their home? I'm so glad you asked me that question because I did an article a while ago for a newspaper about allergies and I interviewed the head of the um, Board, the board certification body for allergists about that, about cat allergies specifically. And he said to me, it's so rare for a person to be allergic to one thing, only one thing, that if you find someone like that, we all like bring them to the allergy conference. It's nobody is allergic to just one thing. Everybody is allergic to more than one thing. So if you're allergic to cats, most likely you also have seasonal allergies, trees, grasses, pollen, things like that. And so what he recommended was that you see an allergist and get your allergies dealt with in whatever way your allergist feels is appropriate. Sure. And so, you know, it's, I was asking him specifically about, you know, getting rid of the cat. And he said, no point because you can't get rid of the trees and the pollen and the dust and right. all of that. When I have people come to visit me who are, have cat allergies, they typically ask me to lock the cat up in a room. And my answer to them is there's cat hair and cat dander all over my apartment. So locking up my cats is not going to do you any good. I always vacuum very thoroughly the morning that they come, but there's still, if you live with cats, there's cat stuff all over your apartment. Sure. And then I give them a Zyrtec when they come. Wow. I have plenty and I give them one. <laughs> hey, any last words for the Bidens? So what I'm going to say is really take the time to train them. I know that Dr. Jill and the president are sometimes very busy and there's no reason that they can't have staff members and other people train the dog and the cat, but training must be done and the time needs to be taken to train them. It's very important. I don't think management by locking the dog up and locking the cat up is good for anyone. And why do you have a pet if you don't want to want them to be around. Sure. I also think we all know the habit that cats have of knocking things off onto the floor. And so I do think that, especially if they're going to leave important things around in the Oval Office on the desk um, at night, you put some little fuzzies on the desk that the cat can knock down. So then the, the international treaties don't end up, you know, in a mess <laughs> on the floor. Beth, give us your website because we need to have that so people can look you up and learn more about you and see and know why you're a dream team mother member other than your, you know, your appearances on the pet bus. Beth Edelman, Wix site, backslash behavior. Great. Thanks for viewing our content on Pet Buzz Plus.